uh, most people peg uh, the growth for the next year to be subdued, but the growth for year after that to be pretty strong. Now, with an assumption that earnings growth will follow the same pattern, and we have a relatively stronger growth after the 950,000 rupees EPS, whatever it comes out to be in the next year, if we have a strong earnings growth, let's assume that's the assumption of the hypothesis. But at the same time, an observation that you made on your LinkedIn yesterday about the, the falling ROEs of India. Now, Indian valuation multiples have also in part held up relative to the rest of the world and rest of the EM and the Asian pack because the superior ROE profile. If that is into question mark, could we have a case of higher earnings growth? Yes, but lower multiples and therefore might kind of negate the absolute upside that might come into, into markets, equity markets, even if there was earnings growth. So, Neera, you know, it's an interesting uh, thing, you know, when I looked at last 30, 35 years of uh... Uh, leverage you know, in Indian corporate, they've been trending down. Of course, for the reasons that, you know, every decade, you know, it basically, uh, especially after 1990, because of increased economic volatility, uh, it flushed out high levered players. And to that extent, of course, the consensus today is leverage is bad. But it's after effect, of course, is that once you reduce the leverage, uh, to that extent, you know, uh, it actually hurts. ROEs because you know high leverage, uh, relatively high leverage, um, not very very high, but high leverage actually aid uh, ROEs because you know uh, at margin back comes down. Uh, now some of the uh, a rather large part of ROE decrease over last decade you know, you can attribute to purely uh, what do you call it uh, decrease in leverage. Okay, so that's sort of a one point. But I think a more interesting point is that India's sort of exceptionalism of sorts, you know, during 2000s, and you, one would argue that even 90s, that Indian corporates actually used to deliver significantly higher ROEs than rest of the world, and more specifically US, given that, you know, we sort of bother more about that market. Uh, during 2003, seven, uh, you know, these boom years, which we all fondly remember and wanted to come back ever and ever again, India's ROEs were about 10% higher than US. Okay. That number has converged actually to a certain extent that after 2017, 18, US ROEs were actually higher. So, you know, in, in some sense, one a strategist and a fund manager has to sort of look back and think that is it so that, you know, the past exceptional high ROEs of Indian were to do with something unique to India then, which is low competition, high life, leverage, and whatever regulatory setup that we had then and market wasn't open uh, to the international competition and so, and so forth. And if that has changed for good now, as far as we are concerned as consumers, you know, it's likely that Indian ROEs sort of are going to be settling at 14, 15%. So does and that have an impact on multiples? So which actually, you know, when you put a simple ERP calculations, I mean, equity risk premium calculations at, at 14, 15, or rather at 16% of ROE, and 30% dividend distribution growing to 40% uh, 40 in next 10 years. And then, you know, terminal growth of, you know, risk-free rate plus 50 basis points, so let's say 8%, you will get, uh, you know, 10.5% or 10% return, you know. So, you know, this whole thing uh, that, you know, somehow you would be able to extract 15, 18% from Indian equities, you know, very difficult, you know, unless there's something exceptional begins to happen in terms of India's growth acceleration, oil cools off dramatically, and people shut down to China and India pivots to West completely. All of that is possible, but you know, as and when it happens, we will see. Right now, doesn't look like. The good news for all of us uh, on a, a, a fast uh, and happy new year note is that there is an alternative. You don't need to be in cash anymore. You can get 8-10%. Uh, you ought to be not out of equities, of course, and, you know, some allocation, but be a little bit underweight instead of 60% equities if you used to be, let's say time to be 50 and, you know, add 10, that extra 10% either to US tech, which is actually looking sort of pretty cheap, or, uh, you know, Indian bonds, especially the three-year corporate bonds and or corporate bond fund, short-term bond funds. And, you know, it is an opportunity in Iran, you know, and on, a, on, a, on this first day, you know, it's an opportunity that, you know, very few times it so happened over the last decade that you looked at US with awe 
but you always found that you know it's run up so well that you know how on earth you would sort of buy and then you know when when it fell india also fell and to that extent there was an opportunity in india as well isn't it but today there is an opportunity which is unique in in some sense that you know us offers that opportunity because it is relatively cheap and could stay cheap for the next 6 months so you know it's it's time for you to dial global risk and sort of rebalance portfolios away from you know just home buyers that one tends to have in india